Hello everyone, bringing you another unboxing video today and what we're having a look at in this video is some more Irish kit which has been very kindly sent over to me from Ireland by Pat Curran who put this, these bits and pieces together for me. He found me the body armour we're going to be having a look at and also sent me some, some other bits of Irish fatigue uniform free of charge which is very kind of him. So thank you very much once again Pat for that and we're going to get into the main part of the video and have a look at these in some detail. I had considered moving the Irish content, looking at Irish kit and Irish uh, recreations of Irish kit and so forth, over onto my secondary channel because obviously that's been created so that the main focus of this channel can be British and Commonwealth military and military history. But obviously a lot of the kit that's looked at is, is either British uh, in origin in terms of the web equipment and so forth and to some degree the combat uniform as well or is linked closely to the Troubles. So I think from that point of view, it's worth keeping it on the main channel and that would be my preference and that's what I've, I've gone with. So that's why this video is uh, coming up on the main channel rather than being shunted over and onto uh, RM Military Miscellany. There will be more coming out over there in the not too distant future for those who are wondering. So anyway, we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at these items which have recently arrived. So here it is, as is usual, I've undone the tape, unfastened the tape and everything on this just to cut down the noise in the video. I'll push this to one side now and we'll start having a look at the bits and pieces which have arrived. So, the first thing to dig out is of course the body armour. Have a look at this here. Quite an interesting design uh, in that it loops around the body and fastens in front with Velcro, then goes over the head and then this section fastens around on top of that. So, quite interesting from that point of view. I believe this is a commercial pattern made by a company called Highmark and they made other patterns similar to this as well. They do show up in photographs of various forces, particularly on UN deployments in the late 1980s, early 1990s, and in particular where those forces didn't have domestic production or body armour or, or didn't have a pre-existing pattern in use. Of course, that's not the case for the Irish uh, Army, the Irish Defence Forces. They had a version of the three-quarter collar body armour based on the US design, of course, uh, that was in use prior to this. These show up somewhere around 1987, around that sort of time period. And as I say, you've got this interesting design in that the, the back piece, uh, you loop around the body with this Velcro fastening around the waist there. This goes over the head and then fastens in front with these two sections of, of touch and close or Velcro on the sides, which are attached to these elastic sections here, which then fasten around at the side there. You do have a, a small collar to this, which you can fit a I believe you can fit uh, padding in that. Possibly you can actually fit armour in that. It doesn't have any in at the moment. You can actually fit further layers of, of Kevlar or ballistic nylon in there. But uh, as I say, at present it doesn't have that. It's just uh, just empty. So I might put some foam padding in there just to pad it out a bit. You do have small rifle stops on each shoulder there. You have a small raised section, padded section there, which would help you locate the, the butt of a rifle if you're bringing the rifle up to the shoulder there. And of course you have these three little magazine pockets down the front here which I think would would hold a, a couple maybe a couple of uh, 30 round what would be referred to now as Stanag but the M16 uh, 30 round magazines I think you'd fit those in there no problem however the Irish uh, this time with talk the time period I'm talking about in the late 1980s the Irish Defence Forces still using the 1958 pattern web equipment of course and would be switching over to PLCE so when you see these in use in photographs they're commonly worn with the 1958 pattern web equipment over the top and these aren't being made use of uh, of course the uh, i think you might be able to fit uh, fal magazines in these actually they might well be big enough to take a couple of 20 round magazines for the fal but uh, as i say you tend to see in photographs these worn with the 1958 pattern web equipment over the front just turn this over and have a quick look at the back see the design at the back here you do have a pocket in the rear which again Unfasten this down with touch and close. See that down in there. There's a big piece of, of the uh, hooked touch and close in there, which suggests you might be able to attach something into this. So, not something I know a huge amount about this body armour, so I'm going to have to do some research and find out a bit more about it. I only know that they do turn up in photographs of, of Irish troops serving in, in, uh, serving in Ireland on uh, border defence duties and other duties relating, obviously, to the Troubles during the late 1980s. So quite an interesting bit of kit from that point of view. And thank you very much again to Pat for helping me locate this and obviously shipping it over to me. And it's a, it's a nice addition to the collection from that point of view. I'll put that to one side and we'll have a look at the other bits which have arrived. These next bits we're going to look at were thrown in gratis by, by Pat, which is very kind of him, so gifted to me. We have trousers and the jacket. 
from what was colloquially referred to as the Ho Chi Minh fatigue uniform, I believe. And this was, as far as I'm aware, and again from talking to Pat, a, a uniform introduced to try and save wear and tear on the combats, which is sort of similar to the concept of British denims. Uh, they weren't very popular. Uh, they're very lightweight and, and cheaply made compared to the, the combat uniform. You can see this jacket here is dated 1987 and made by McGonnell Brothers. And you've got the size there of 40L, I think. Are they reading it? Or was it 40I? No, that is an I rather than an L. I was thinking the uh, might have been partly worn away there. So this is a four pocket jacket, as you can see, a bit like a bush jacket in, in some respects, the way it's sort of cut. Pleated pockets at the bottom, pleated pockets at the top. And again, these do turn up in photographs of training in the 1980s. They turn up quite commonly in photographs of the FCA when the FCA started to be uh, provided with, with uniform. I've seen a few photographs of uh, chaps wearing these uh, in, uh, in training and on exercise as opposed to wearing the, the combat uniform proper. And we have the trousers here with a, a pleated leg pocket there and one on the other side, as you can see. A rear pocket there on the, the right hip. And then no dressing pocket, which is a difference from the combat uniform, of course, and the two hip pockets there, as you can see. And these also have a label in them here and these were made in 1992 by Port West, which is a very common manufacturer of Irish combat clothing at the time. And I believe at the bottom there, that would be the, the contract number. So quite an interesting thing to add to the collection. I look forward to trying these on. Uh, as I say, quite a nice addition that I, I'd not managed to locate elsewhere. So it's very kind both for Pat to put these together for me and also to send them over free of charge. So very, very kind of you there, Pat, and a, a lovely addition to the collection of Irish kit. So that's a look at this, this body armour which has arrived and this uh, fatigue uniform which is uh, quite interesting and as I say it does turn up in photographs so it's a nice thing if I'm looking to do future recreations it's a nice thing to have in, in the collection from that point of view as well. So I want to say a big thank you again to Pat for sending these bits and pieces over to me and helping in locating these various items. It's a lot easier to find them in Ireland than it is over here, obviously, looking on, on online sites. Uh, word of mouth is often the way, and a lot of these things turn up offline, as it were, and Pat's been very kind in helping me find some of these bits and pieces. And it all feeds in and adds to the, the collection of Irish kit I have, which obviously allows me to put together recreations of kit of Irish soldiers at various different points, primarily through the Troubles. That's my main area of interest of what was going on south of the border in terms of border security, uh, assistance to the Garda, and also in dealing with uh, weapons caches and things which were occasionally found south of the border as well. So there will be more videos covering that sort of thing going forward. I do hope you found it interesting looking at this video. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as they always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.